This is the Perfect Pup Podcast, helping you build a better relationship with your pup. Presented by Pupford. Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. We're doing an episode that is almost a public service announcement. Hopefully this gets shared to a lot of people because it can help save your dog's life. We are going to talk about xylitol, what it is, why it's poisonous for your dog, where it exists and what foods might be problematic, and of course, how to keep your dog safe. So let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about what xylitol is. It is a low calorie sugar substitute. It is typically made from corn cobs and birch bark. And you can actually sometimes see it labeled on food ingredient lists under names like wood sugar, birch sugar, birch bark extract, or sometimes even just sugar alcohol, which can be confusing because not all sugar alcohols are problematic for dogs, but xylitol is. So if you see something with sugar alcohol on the ingredient list, you want to be extra careful around your dogs. Why is xylitol poisonous? Essentially, the, the reason it's used in humans is that it does not cause blood sugars to change, you know, right? low calorie, low sugar, that type of thing. But in dogs, it interacts differently. And what happens is it actually sets off a sharp increase in insulin. And that can actually lead to hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. Uh, it can actually cause a few other things to happen. The main one is hypoglycemia, but it can also ca cause hepatic failure, which is liver failure. It can cause hypokalemia, which is low potassium, and it can even cause hypophosphatemia, which is low phosphorus. I hope I got those names right. If I didn't, forgive me. Hypoglycemia, it can actually become deadly if it's untreated. And obviously the liver failure is, is deadly. And, and those are all intertwined. I'm not enough of a medical professional to really dive into all of that, but that's the basics of what happens. So the next question is likely, okay, well, how much or what can cause problems for my dog? Generally speaking, and again, I would just say this, I hope this goes without being said, but if you believe your dog ate something with xylitol, don't worry about how much it was. Don't worry about, you know, how many grams per kilogram, just call your vet. And if your vet's unavailable, call the poison control hotline. A lot of those, you know, the poison help phone numbers, they will charge you uh, depending on what exactly happens with the phone call, but is 50 to $75 worth keeping your dog safe? In my opinion, yes, it is. So again, Call immediately if you see or believe your dog ate something with xylitol. So as for calculations, I'm going to go through this and I, I, I want to put a quick disclaimer that every dog is different. We don't know exactly how dogs respond to certain things that are poisonous. So these are all kind of general numbers that have been found through different studies. So anything greater than 0.1 grams of xylitol per kilogram of body weight of your dog is going to put your dog at risk. We'll come back to these numbers and kind of break them down. Anything greater than 0 0.5 grams per kilogram is likely going to be lethal unless it is treated immediately. So what does that look like? You know, those terms, 0 0.1 grams per kg, if you're like me, I don't really know kilograms. I go off of pounds. I don't really know grams super well. So I enlisted the help of my wife, who is a nurse, and she helped me break down some of these numbers and what they mean. So to do a quick calculation of what these numbers look like for your dog, I'm gonna give you like a basic formula. Again, if you have any thoughts that your dog ingested xylitol, just call your vet. But zero greater than 0 0.1 grams per kg puts your dogs at risk. Greater than 0 0.5 grams per kg is likely lethal. So. Let's look at this. My 70 pound Labrador would be about 32 kilograms. I'll just say 30 for easier numbers. So basically once you have your dog's weight in kilograms, you're going to times that by 0 0.1. So in my dog's instance, going with the 30 kilograms, roughly three grams of xylitol is enough to put them into hypoglycemia. Going into that 0 0.5 grams per kg, that would be about 15 grams of xylitol would likely be lethal for them. Again, get your dog's weight, put it into kilograms, times that kilograms by 0 0.1 to know what is a risk level and times it by 0 0.5 to know when it's bordering on lethal. Again, with the caveat of if you think they ate it, just call your vet. 
So what does that look like? And this is where it gets challenging is that most food items are not going to show exactly how much xylitol is in the product. They, they just don't do that. So there's not an exact science, but roughly speaking, we'll use the example of gum. It's kind of the most common. Zero, most sticks of gum have about 0.22 all the way up to one gram of xylitol. So with the example of my Labrador, about 30 kgs, timesing that by 0.1, three grams. Of course, if it's you know the type of gum that's only half a gram of xylitol, maybe they're going to need six, but potentially as little as three pieces of gum could cause my large Labradors to go into hypoglycemia, which if untreated can be deadly. And then going at that 0.5 number, it would be closer to about 15, potentially up to 25 sticks. But Again, if your dog gets into gum, they're not going to think, well, I'm only going to eat one stick. They're probably going to eat it all. And you can see how quickly it can become dangerous and deadly for our dogs. And especially a, a small dog. If you took a dog that was even half the weight of my dogs or, you know, a third of their weight. So let's go 10 kgs. You, they don't even need a full stick of gum to potentially enter into hypoglycemia. So I don't want to fear monger. I don't want to freak you out, but I just want it to be clear that very small amounts of xylitol can be extremely poisonous and even deadly for your dog. So let's talk about the symptoms, what to look for if you think your dog may have ingested xylitol. These symptoms can start fast, sometimes as quick as 10 minutes, but can take up to an hour. You might see things like um, being lethargic, vomiting, weakness, your dog staggering, collapsing, even seizures generally acting abnormal. And again, I'll say it, the faster you get treatment for your dog, the higher the likelihood of survival. It's just that simple. So what does treatment look like? While there is not a remedy or, you know, like an anti-venom for xylitol, typically what your vet might do is try to induce vomiting to get most or if not all of the product out of their stomach. So if less of it gets into the bloodstream, those types of things. Be aware though, you should not just start trying to get your dog to vomit. If you think they ate something, you need to call your vet because in some instances, it can cause more problems if there's vomiting. So again, call your vet. What they will likely do if you bring your dog in outside of inducing vomiting, they may give your dog intravenous glucose, which intravenous just in the veins, like in, through an IV, they'll give glucose. They will monitor the liver because again, the hepatic failure, liver failure is one of the common things. They might give plasma infusions and generally just monitor and keep an eye on your dog. So again, call ASAP if you believe this has happened. Let's talk about foods that can have xylitol in them. Of course, we've covered gum. It's typically sugar-free gum, but also things like sugar-free mints, sugar-free candy, some peanut butter and nut butter that, you know, touts itself as low sugar, uh, even mouthwash and toothpaste, which is why it's so important to never use human toothpaste. You should use dog toothpaste for your dog. Certain syrups and jams, even chewable vitamins, some personal lubricants, nasal sprays. There's a whole host of things that can include xylitol. Really the next thought is, okay, how do I keep my dog safe? How do I make sure that they are not going to get their paws, mouths, hands on xylitol? First thing, when you're buying items, just make sure if it has xylitol, you are approaching it differently than if it does not. So the number one step is to just be aware. Be aware if the products that you're purchasing contain xylitol. If you decide you want to continue having those items in your home, totally understandable. Certain things you may not be able to go without, like certain you know nasal sprays and those types of things. So if you are going to have something with xylitol, put it in a place that your dog cannot access even if they are behaving poorly and getting into some mischievous activities. So, you know, instead of just having it put away or on the counter, have it behind a cabinet or even in something that they're not able to open up on their own, different things that you can do to keep your dog safe. I hope truly that you never have to deal with it. Unfortunately, there are so many sad stories of pup parents who have lost their dogs from ingesting xylitol. So if you wanna play it on the extra safe side, don't get products with xylitol as much as possible, just avoid them. And if you are gonna have them, keep them out. 
The number one takeaway I want you to have from this episode is if you believe your dog ingested xylitol, call your vet immediately. The largest factor, the number one factor for keeping your dog safe and hopefully having a good recovery is the speed at which they get care. So it's important to do it immediately, take care of what you need to. If your vet's not available, call a pet poison hotline first, and then try to find an emergency hospital in your area, both at the same time, potentially do what you can to keep your dog safe. I hope you enjoyed this episode as kind of sad and scary as it might be. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, clicking on the show, the perfect pup show within Apple Podcasts, clicking leave a review, giving feedback, giving episodes, telling me episodes you like, giving me ideas for future episodes, all of it. I read every single review. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe, leave a comment. I try to respond to all those comments as well. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode. Wow.